Clive Barker's Jericho is a game that I've seen the value bin for the last 14 years, and I have never once thought about buying it. So when it turned up in my search for a game to play, I jumped. This game had to have something worthwhile. But then I saw that it was developed by Mercury Steam, a game that I remember being attached to American McGee at some point, a developer and writer who has these really interesting games under his belt. And it turns out that Mercury Steam helped develop McGee's Scrapland, which is like a weird action-adventure puzzle game. It looks unique and has some really interesting gameplay mechanics, namely possessing enemies to complete objectives. And now I understand that they must have a gimmick they put into every game they work on, because in Jericho, you have six playable characters switchable at will. So let's check it out. But first, the premise. But no, 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 we, we have some work to do first. S-Mod is a mod for Jericho and it adds a lot to the game and honestly fixes a lot of the game's problems because it is a console port. It adds an FOV setting, it adds the ability to get rid of head bombing, uh, it fixes this really weird mouse issue, but not entirely, which we'll come back to you later, but it adds dynamic lights for muzzle flashes, uh, new sprites, fixes some of the game's weird balancing. Again, more on that later, but yeah, let's talk about the premise now. This is the first game we're covering on the channel which has a fairly involved premise, and by that I mean it's got some weird Christian mod that which I don't necessarily understand because I'm an atheist. But let's move on. So the idea is that God created humanity, but before that he created the firstborn, a creature so disgusting that he cast it away into the abyss. Which, honestly, kind of an overreaction, but okay. He then moved on to making humans, but the firstborn was so powerful that it would break from the abyss itself. Basically, each time absorbing small areas of the world, a desert in World War II, a temple, all sorts of things, he basically has this tiny little pocket dimension. But the catch is all these small areas of the world are actually the same area of the world, but from different times. World War II, Roman times, medieval times, ancient Egyptian times, and of course, the literal birth of time. You play as a member of Jericho Squad, who are a part of the Department of Occult Warfare, designed to combat the Germans' occult research during the Second World War. You were sent into al Kali to prevent Arnold Leach, a rogue agent, from opening the bridge and unleashing the Firstborn. And that's where the game starts. And that's where the plot summary ends and we move on to presentation. Mainly the visuals for now. Jericho was released in 2007. And when compared to games released in 2007, games like Crisis, Bioshock, Mass Effect, it's not a very good looking game. It's subpar, but it also isn't a AAA game. It's technically a AA game, because sure, it was published by Codemasters, but it obviously was not produced with the budget of a 2007 AAA game. So I can let a lot of its technical shortcomings go because of that. But what I can't let go is how Jericho suffers from the weirdest mixture of good and bad visual styling that I think I've ever seen in a game. It's simultaneously flat, but also really unique looking at times. The game, because it's a lower budget shooter, should be trying to construct a unique look. But that's not always the case with Jericho. It has an extremely bland look most of the time. It's grey, like, really grey. Plus, the game is weirdly high contrast. Shadows are pitch black and the game is nearly always impossible to see. Which made my eyes hurt, so I'm not a big fan of that. But for some fucking reason, the further you get into the game, the more bloomy everything is. The last mission has some terrible bloom, like it's really bright and kind of hurts to stare at. I think the amount of detail put into world props and objects is admirable. Most scenes are densely packed with just shit littered everywhere, which is a nice touch. There's enough random rocks, blood, and other decoration to sell the idea that this is an ancient city, and thus has been for a lot of different times and people. The environments look very gory, for lack of a better word. It sells the idea that you're basically walking through the site of an eternal war. So that's cool. Although, I would have still liked to see more detail, because as it stands, the levels are very empty. Sure, they have shit everywhere, but these are massive open rooms. With what seems like no purpose to exist. Like, what is this room? Was it a bank? I don't know. The game doesn't give me any clues, and it's such a minor thing I feel like complaining about. But it hurts the immersion of the game. And games should aim to be immersive. Uh, immersive doesn't mean Red Dead 2. It also means Minecraft, where... Basically, it just means I want to keep on playing the game. My attention should not be divided by asking these stupid questions, but for Jericho it is. This game has interesting, unique enemy design and environmental work, but most of the time it's just overused and you quickly get sick of it. 
I quite like the Roman and medieval levels, but you spend most of your time in densely lit tunnels or wide open rooms. I would have loved to see more densely detailed areas. For the Roman levels, why not have us walk in through a village? It needed just something to split up all these weird open rooms with these massive pillars. Because that's another thing. These levels seem massive. Like the scale's off. These doorways are nearly always too big. Maybe the idea is meant to be that these are like idealized locations. Because, spoiler alert, but you're basically in purgatory. So, it confused me, so it might confuse you. I think they were going for like grand and impressive, but it just comes off as cheap and underwhelming. Some of the later levels have really cool stuff in them, but they just come way too late. I was already tuned out by the time I crossed the halfway mark. This game does not put its best foot forward. At least, character designs are decently well done. Everyone wears leather, it's kind of like the Matrix decided the fuck Hellraiser. It's an interesting combo, but it does sell the idea of being an occult branch of the US Army. Like, you're dressed technically, but it's also gothic. So I get what they were trying to go for, and I kind of dig it. Enemy designs are another place that I think, well, good, quickly got old. The game has 13 types of enemies, and most of them are confined to their own short stages. You always be, regardless of stage, fighting the same three enemy types, however, with some enemies unique to the level sprinkled in on top. The three most commonly occurring enemies are these walking zombie fiends. They look good, kind of gross, but that's kind of the point, I guess, right? Like, the big ones here have these bulges, which are, they're, I mean, they're walking mines, which is cool, they just explode if you get near them. You have to shoot off the yellow bits and then they die. It's a good way to spice up the combat, but it does get old quickly. And these guys insta-kill, which you'll hear more about later because it, it gets worse. And on top of that, um, you also have your normal melee shambler type, and then you have this flying bat thing that I think has the most health out of any creature in the game. Which kind of sucks because they move so fast, but to be fair, some of the in-game abilities do just kill them very quickly. It's a balancing act that I don't think Jericho always gets right at times, but again, more on that later. But for now, because this is a shooter, how does the shooting look? Does it look good? And yeah, it, it does. I do think that it looks good, but if this game was to be celebrated for anything graphically, it would be effects and lighting, especially in combat. Every round fires emits a bright light that lights up rooms, and because this is a squad shooter with six people, you're basically always blinded in combat. And whether that's a positive is up to you, but it does, like most things in the game, get really tiring really quickly, in my opinion. But at times it can look amazing as your entire squad holds down a line and guns down enemies. And that's the other thing. Unloading into an enemy is not fear one level, but it's, it's good. That combined with the ragdoll physics really helps to sell the effect. You unleash a torrential rain of bullets and the enemies will fall backwards as you unload into their now ragdoll body. And sometimes these swarms of fires come and take the enemies away, making them disappear. I don't know what the lore explanation is, but it always makes me think that they're about to be revived, which does confuse me during combat, but you do get used to it. So, yeah. Overall, in terms of graphics, nothing really jumped out to me as bad. It's all fairly average here, nothing takes you out of the game and makes you go, ah, what was that? But as previously mentioned, the biggest failing of this game in terms of the visuals is just the styling. It's just so bland and it lacks a unique look or flair that really could have made this game more visually identifiable. It kind of reminds me of Necrovision, but if Necrovision had no soul. But I digress. In terms of audio, the game sounds pretty standard. Nothing really jumps out at me as bad. The voice acting is actually, honestly, pretty good. It is cheesy, so it's not like the performance is going to have you crying, but it suits the atmosphere and tone well enough. Yes, as were the priests of this temple. The high priestess. So much anger, so much hatred. They wanted us to suffer as much as they suffered. It's like they were in my head, cutting from the inside. I think Cole got the worst of it. You know she has problems. Fear of the dark, fear of being touched, fear of tight spaces. Let me talk to her. Don't touch me! Bond! For God's sake, do it! Please! Please! I do wish they had more combat dialogue, though, because you do just hear the same stuff over and over and over again. It's more of a budget problem, so I can forgive that. 
And on that train of thought, I think weapon sounds are fine. They like impact, but I don't, I don't think they sound bad. I'm just underdeveloped, which comes back to the whole budget thing. The guns sound the same regardless of where you shoot them, so there's no reverb if you're in a tight space or whatever. Which does lessen the impact and the intensity of the sound, and this is going to sound strange, but I don't remember the soundtrack for Jericho. Like, I don't recall it having one. So I looked it up, and there is one, and I don't remember any of it. I even made sure that I had the music turned up in the settings, and I do. It's even in the recordings, but I just don't remember it. Which I think means that it's really forgettable and probably buried under other sounds in the game, like combat noises and whatnot. But listening to it on its own, it is kind of—it's got some good tracks on it, so that's nice. And now for the big one. I keep going back and forth on whether or not I like the gameplay. On one hand, it's very clunky and has obvious shortcomings, but on the other hand, some of the shooting's fun. It has the potential to be fun for the right person. This game is effectively the definition of a corridor shooter. You walk into a corridor and enemies start spawning in front of you. But this game does something unique. It doesn't want you to push the enemies at all. The enemies literally keep spawning until you kill like 20 of them, then they stop, sweeping them by a checkpoint. And, I don't know, it got old really quickly for me. It's just so stupidly infuriating. It's a shooter, you should be pushing the enemy at all times, trying to flank, uh, flank them. But that's just not a thing. And I'll come back to this later, because I do have way more to say on this point. But you need context first. The core fundamentals of a great shooter are present here. But shooting the enemy just lacks impact, like any impact at all. None of the weapons feel good to use. My favourite is probably the underbarrel shotgun that Jones has, or the dual pistols that Rawling has. The sniper rifle feels awful, it lacks impact, does next to no damage as well. It's meant to be this high damage, low rate of fire weapon, but it just sucks in, in Jericho, so what the fuck's the point? And there's something wrong with how mouse input is handled as well. And I don't... No, I don't think it's a mouse dead zone. No, 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 it's a mouse dead zone. Okay, so... It only appears to affect tiny micro-adjustments. But it really throws off your own. I didn't know how much I actually did these adjustments until I started playing Jericho. It makes sniping on the few occasions that I actually used it practically useless. Because I can't fucking aim. It's terrible. And yeah, S-Mod, you know that mod we installed? That was meant to fix it. Maybe it's better now, but I, I don't know. It's still annoying regardless. But what about Jericho's main defining trait, the six playable characters? Well, they all play differently, but I don't think it's different enough to really think of them as unique characters with different playstyles. The differences between each character are limited to their weapons and their special abilities. They don't even seem to have different amounts of resistance, or health, or anything, really. Even the movement speeds seem pretty much the same between them. I think the melee focus sword user is maybe slightly faster, but maybe it's because I have to play more mobile with her. I simply just don't know. Some of the abilities that the characters have, by the way, are borderline useless in combat, with use being limited to story moments only. For example, Delgado, he's the minigun guy, he has a shield that can block damage from fire, that's his ability. But the problem is that only one enemy in the game actually deals fire damage, and it appears for 10 minutes, so that renders his special ability useless. Luckily, his other ability is one of the most important in the game, as he summons this fire demon from his hand that two shots most enemies, and also it's a guaranteed hit. The, uh, the sniper chick has a kinetic push that staggers enemies, but She's a sniper, so why would she need that? That ability should have gone for the girl that has a sword, or the guy that has the underbarrel shotgun. It just seems really strange to me that a close range ability was given to a character that has used his range fundamentally. She's a sniper after all. 
Six playable characters and all of them have uses, but they're fringe cases at best. You kind of just pick out who you have access to at any given time. Because sometimes you get split up and only have a small section of the squad. You will eventually find a character whose weapons and abilities work best for you. I really like Delgado's pistol and his fire damage ability as it, just, it looks cool and kills enemies really quickly. And you'd also think that all these different abilities from each character could be like chained together to make combos, right? And obviously I'm setting this up to say no, because no, you can't. You kind of just switch between them using their abilities, which it isn't a bad system. I just think this game could have been a lot better if more focus was put on the idea of being a squad of like powered up magic spec ops. Because as it says, the characters are just different weapon loadouts with some sprinkles on top. And you might be wondering, how does the game balance when you have six characters shooting at the same enemies at the same time? Wouldn't enemies just die really quickly? N no, no, n no, they, they don't. They're actually bullet sponges. They have so much health. But the interesting part is that the enemies all have heads that can be headshot for more damage. So there are still ways to quickly dispatch enemies, which is good, because nothing is more boring than having to run through two realized worth of ammo to kill a basic enemy, which you will do a lot. Which almost made me quit the game during the first hour or so. It was only made worse by the fact that this is the first game that I would call an anti-corridor corridor shooter. Let me explain. This game has some fucked enemy spawns, and I mean fucked. It was not clear in the first hour if the game was bugging out or if this was intended. If you choose to move up during combat, you will just have an enemy spawn on top of you. Because enemies spawn in front of your very eyes. It's like necrovision on fucking steroids. You kill an enemy and go, ah, oh, well, must be safe to move up then. And then get up to the cover that you're going to move up to. And then the enemy just spawns in on top of you and kills you. It's a complete joke. This is a modern shooter which you play like Time Crisis. You're supposed to be these highly specialized soldiers equipped with these state-of-the-art weapons, tactics, and a literal magic. But you just stand at one side of the room and shoot the enemies on the other side. It's so simple and lacking in depth. Even the enemies are just simple. Because this game has 13 types of enemies, with most of them just being confined to small parts of the game or being specific to time errors of the of each chapter. Well, Granted, some of these enemies do require special tactics to fight, but they can all just be defeated by pumping lead into them repeatedly. It's just not a fun experience. It's simply just too basic and doesn't require much from the player other than patience. This game really starts to get good after the World War II section, which is about halfway through, which is a lot of time to ask from a player. This game has heaps of potential, but it's just let down by these poorly executed and poorly fought out gameplay. Some of the later game enemies are actually pretty fun to fight. They require some form of thinking from the player, but they only exist on screen for like 45 minutes at the most. But to be fair, it's a good 45 minutes. Most areas are a slog though. It's just heaps of respawning enemies, and I'm not talking like one or two ways, I'm talking like five or six per combat arena. And the only way to know if the waves are done is the cheeky checkpoint reach graphic that flashes at the bottom of the screen. After that is done, you're done fighting and you can move on to the next room. But that next room will just be the same shit again. But let's talk about the story before I completely lose my mind. I can see the appeal of the narrative. It's different. It's not well written, it's not thought provoking or even really all that interesting. It's different and that's it. But. I am going to talk about the titular Clive Barker, because, well, he is actually titular. He put his own name in the fucking title. Really early in this review, I made a comment about how this game's core characters look like the Matrix fucks Hellraiser. And, well, that's because Clive Barker is the director and writer of Hellraiser. So, I guess he just likes leather and gothic stuff. Fair enough. He's a big-time horror fan, he's written and created horror films, books, arts, all sort of things. And he really likes the occult, so that explains the heavy Christian themes, the symbolism, and just the narrative overall of Jericho, you know, plus the name. And as is not common in my reviews, I'm actually not going to focus on the details of the story here, because there really just isn't anything at all. It's very basic and... 
there's not much detail to it. And interestingly enough, there was a planned sequel, but considering no one has talked about it for nearly 10 years, I'm going to assume that's not going to happen. So, yeah, that's Clive Barker's Jericho. And, well, I wouldn't tell you to go play it. It's simply not all that engaging. It could be a nice way to spend an afternoon, but it's not a game that will make you want to play it. It is a slog to get through. Despite its 7 or so hour runtime, it easily feels like 15, if not more. But enough people like this game, there's a fair chance that you will like it too, so give it a go, but... It is freeware, so it's free, so it costs nothing but your time, and you will know pretty quickly if you like it. The first hour is the same as the rest, it only gets more action-packed, and there's just generally more combat and more unique stuff. The only real saving grace for Jericho is that it has a unique gameplay mechanic. I've never played a first-person shooter with six playable characters of whom you can switch at will. Mind you, there's normally a reason they don't do that in games. And it's because it's super hard to balance and build gameplay around six different rule books. And surprise, surprise, Jericho has that same problem. Each character feels fairly similar to the last, only the weapons change. So you kind of just pick who you like and play as them for the most part. I give it a tentative recommendation, but only to check it out. Don't stick around if you don't like it. And I mean, it was also the last game that Clive Barker ever worked on. And no, he's, he's not dead. The, I think the game was just that shit that he just went, mm, maybe I don't want to make games anymore. So, so yeah, that's Clive Barker's Jericho. Thanks for watching.